All right, what I want to do today is um, show you the Hario uh, Skirton coffee mill. It is a manual uh, coffee mill. Um, it comes in uh, a nice little box. Um, <clears throat> what you're going to get is, uh, as you put it together, is a little device like this. There's two main pieces. Okay, on the we have the glass um, the bottom holds the ground coffee. It's got a little rubber. Uh, no slippy deal right here on the bottom so you, know, you can hold it in your hand or you know, set it on the table or something. Uh, the top part is going to be your grinding, your mill. Um, the little nut comes right off the top which uh, removes the handle. And this part here is going to be how you adjust the ceramic burrs that are in the, uh, the hand grinder. Um, what you're going to do is uh, when you remove this uh, collet, you can see it has two little flat sides um, and two little pegs that hold it in place whenever you set the mill the way you want to. Um, you're going you're to rotate this, um, this here, this collet here, which is going to allow those burrs uh, distance between them, which is going to set the um, type of grind that you want. What I've done, so on the collet I've put, I've, I've turned it until the burrs are seated against one another. Okay, essentially you could not grind coffee here. This is just a, uh, a spot where they're seated together. Now I've put a, an arrow okay, on, the, on the collet and a black um, marking on the side here. And so what you can do then is as you turn this collet, okay, and when the black arrow comes all the way back around, essentially I've made one revolution of the collet. Now the, the, um, the purpose of this is that you can use this to test out the grinds um, that you want to do with the, uh, the Hario grinder. <clears throat> By doing this you can always say alright well hey when I use my aero press I like it at one revolution. Um, when I do a uh, French press I want it at two revolutions or one and a half revolutions, you know percolator at two. Um, whatever, whatever you want to do, you actually learn uh, how to use the, the coffee grinder a little bit better. I'm going to take um, the lock nut part, I'm going to set it right here on top. The handle goes right on top of that. And then our nut just screws all this stuff together, keeps it in place. Okay? So now what we've got is one revolution. Okay? I'm going to put our glass uh, jar onto here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some coffee. We're going to put in one scoop of coffee just so we can see what it looks like when we grind it up. Okay? Now, one way, you can do it a couple different ways. You can hold it like this, you can hold it like this. I like to set it down on the desk, okay, which gives it a good um, uh, stability. And then we just uh, we go through and grind the coffee. You can hear it's uh, out of coffee now. Unscrew it. And here we have our ground coffee inside the jar. Now let's see, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, it's a, it's kind of a, a fine grind. Um, but there's a, you know, it's got some, a little bit of weight to it. Let's see. Yeah. This might be good for like an AeroPress, um, uh, maybe a mocha pot. Um, it's a little bit, it's probably I guess on the fine drip side, um, but you know you can always play with it and figure out um, how it is that you you like the coffee. So you can see that what we would do is we just experiment back and forth. If you're getting a, a bitter cup with uh, in your um, in your mocha pot and you want it to be a little bit coarser, you then you go uh, one and a quarter um, rotations with the collet. And so then you get to know your grinder a little better and figure out what it is that you like and where you like to grind for specific um, applications. Now what I want to show you is the what I consider the one drawback of the Hario skirt, and I saw this in a in another video, um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna show it to you right here. 
uh, when we remove uh, the the nut and remove the the locking device okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this collet one more rotation so we're at two full rotations now okay I'm going to put it all back together that take but a second you see it's it's pretty easy to change grinds but what you're going to see is the distance between the two burrs right here okay can you see that there's a slight difference now this is what the drawback is see how that moves okay so when you're grinding and you're putting pressure on this outside edge it's going to offset these burrs you can see here that it's really close right here there's a gap let's see if we can get that in the, the photo there's a gap here and right here you can see the burr is really close so what's going to happen is we're going to end up with some fine ground coffee um, some mid ground coffee and some really coarse coffee all right so i'm going to show you an example of this as well we're going to put in a, a scoop of coffee and we're going to give it a good uh, whirl here You also see it chewed through that coffee a lot faster than it did uh, the first time. Alright, so now we can see, you see these huge pieces and then the little fine pieces? And this is similar to what you're going to get out of your classic uh, Whirlybird grinder um, with the blade grinder. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, see? Look at that. And there, there's a huge piece, huge. And then, you know, just right here, all right, we have some that's that's fine and some that's mid ground, and that's just from that that burr being a little bit um, off center when you rotate it. And you know, the the guy on the video had the suggestion, and I, you know, I don't know who you'd make the suggestion to, but. If this shaft ran through here and then th all the way through the burr and attached to something maybe in the bottom here, um, which would stabilize that burr from rocking back and forth so much, we'd get a more stabilization. It, it would have perfect. Uh, you would you could grind perfect coffee of it every time. Um, so basically, with this uh, with this grinder, what you're going to end up with is um, uh, really good um, finer ground coffees like for your mocha pot, your AeroPress. Um, you could probably do a pretty good drip coffee. Um, but if you went to a French press or a percolator, you're going to end up with this um, hodgepodge, uh, almost whirly, uh, whirly blade uh, style where you have these you know huge, huge chunks of coffee and then these little tiny uh, fine grounds all together and um, so if you do it in a french press you probably still end up with a you know a decent cup of coffee but you're gonna have a lot more sludge or, or in a percolator you're gonna have a lot more um, sediment there in the bottom of your cup but all in all uh, especially if you need um, a grinder for travel uh, or camping uh, this thing uh, this thing's gonna do great for you um, you just gotta figure out exactly where you want to set it so that um, you get the coffee that you want for the application that you're using. Alright, hope you enjoyed.